Next question is from Katie Sion. What are the qualifying markers in becoming an intermediate lifter? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, there's no belt system in lifting, right? Like in martial arts where you, you can go through the belt system right, and right. It, it signifies- We should have, certain, have that, though. That would be cool. Wouldn't it be great good, that? Right? Yeah. Certain, certain it'll signify that you've- you know, you're, Time under the iron exactly. or something. It will like, like, give people better ideas of who you should be paying attention to yeah. in the gym and not, right? Totally. Yeah. Like, oh, look at that white belt. So, over there. <laughs> so here, here's what I think. Um, I would say, generally speaking, if you have been working out consistently Consistently, and what I mean by consistently is week in, week out, at least two to three days a week minimum for about a year. You're probably close to an intermediate lifter. Um, you know, skill level wise, you should probably be able to perform certain fundamental movements like a squat or a deadlift uh, or an overhead press or a row. But really, it's about learning your body because you you may be lifting for a year and working on mobility and still not be able to squat, but you know your body because you've been training for a year. You kind of know what it can and can't do. You know to apply, how to apply intensity properly. So I would say probably around a year of consistent, no break, you know, no long break in between type training. I think that's probably where I'd say someone's intermediate. Yeah, I, th I, you know, I like this question too, mainly because I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. I mean, I think there's uh, a, a, we could go back and forth on what what we would consider an, an immediate lifter. Now, so for me, I, I think an intermediate lifter, um, I I would say that you have good form in, in, in any exercise that you do. Like, so the the beginning process of lifting, whether that takes you six months, nine months, a year, two years, to get to this point. But all the the fundamental movements, everything from squat, deadlift to a row to a bench press to a bicep curl to a stand, shoulder press, all the the basic movements and exercises that you see most people doing, uh, to be considered an intermediate lifter, I think you should be able to perform those exercises with good form. Mm -hmm. That that to me is the and then and then advanced is to take that good form and do things start piling on it yeah load, load like or, lots yeah. of load and high intensity right so to me beginner you're Different learning learning technique overload. form what does that look like intermediate you've now accomplished good form you can pretty much pick up a barbell a dumbbell perform the exercise execute it with good mechanics advanced lifter you can now load like crazy do explosively dynamically and, and maintain good form. That's yeah, kind of how I would tend to agree with that. I mean, in, in terms of uh, the qualifiers, because I know a lot of people usually think immediately like how long they've been going to the gym and doing their routine. And you know, it's for some people, it's even been uh, you know eight to ten years or you know however long it is. But uh, I wouldn't even consider them an intermediate level just because the form is something that I do sort of pick apart right away. And that's, right. that's not to say that's not to take anything away, but me as a trainer and like, you're asking me this question, I would, I would have to then take them from where they are and start from the beginning to learn the mechanics, establish, you know, all the right patterns. Uh, so if you've actually done that work and you've gone through and established all the right mechanics, you know how to adjust your posture, you know how to uh, perform these things uh, with with ease, uh, then you know I think we're we're ready to graduate uh, and, and really like kind of start getting yourself more into like the on the path to start loading it more heavily. And then when we get to like advanced, it's got to be how quickly you can load it and with how much load. Well, yeah. I like using that instead of a time frame too, because the the opposite is true sometimes too. Like I've had clients that you know, hire me and because they have an athletic background or they have incredible body awareness, they pick up on cues really quick. You know, once I show them the movement one or two times, yeah. they get right in the groove and like, it's like, oh wow, this person's already, so that person could be, I could consider that person even after a few months, potentially uh, an intermediate lifter because they've, we've done all the exercises, they can perform it perfectly. I can give them verbal cues and they can adjust their body right away. Like that to me over, like and to Justin's point, you could be lifting for five years and I consider you still a beginner. If I look at the mechanics, how you move and there's no attention to the, the detail of the movement and all you've really focused on over those five years is, can I lift more weight? Can I lift more weight? Can I lift more weight? Because the body will do all kind, all sorts of things to contort itself and leverage itself to lift more weight. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are an advanced lifter, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you know you're you're hearing this answer from trainers, and I know what we're doing right now. We're trying to think of 
watching someone work out and what kind of workout would I recommend to them? Yeah, where we'd place them. Right. And honestly, it, it doesn't matter because here's the deal. Here's a wonderful thing I think about resistance training in particular is there's no there's no destination. There's never a point you hit. There's where no you're, spoon. Where you're done, right? Where you're done. <laughs> you're, it's it's all about- making it philosophical. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. all about, that's a matrix reference. Yeah. It's all about the journey. It's all about constantly you know changing your workout to suit your, your current goals, the context of your life, your, you know, if you have injuries or pain, your age, you know, how your diet is, stress levels. The workouts are always going to change. It kind of doesn't really matter. I mean, if I'm training a client, I'm going to assess them no matter what. It doesn't matter how long they've been working out. I'm going to do an assessment based off of their movement, based off of their fitness level. Then I'm going to train them accordingly. So yeah, it's a constant. No, that's yeah, a, that's it, a, it's a really good point you're bringing up, Sal, because I'm I'm now thinking about, okay, how, why is this person asking this question, right? And so a lot of times, like, we list programs, like, this falls in the beginner, this falls right. in the media, this falls in advance. Mm -hmm. but, and, and so based off of that theory, then someone like myself, who's been lifting for 20 years, would never do something in starter. Well, that's not true at all. You know, start, our starter program is the most beginner program that we own, yet – there are movements and exercise in there that Still I has a lot of value. Yeah, that have t yeah. tremendous value right. that I will always revisit and intermittently introduce into my own routine. So, to your point, that may, that's a very good point. That it doesn't matter what le whether you're an advanced, beginner, intermediate. Uh, that doesn't mean that the, oh, this is the program for you, and you there's no nothing of value that is in a beginner uh, program either. No, and, and I love the intermediate phase if there is such a thing, because there's a lot, this is where you do most of your learning mm. in the beginner phase. You're actually learning that you, you, you actually start to realize you don't know a lot. Yeah. You don't, you can't do certain things. This is what you realize in the beginner phase. And a lot of the strength things that come in the beginner phase are neurological. Um, and you, you don't necessarily build a ton of muscle, but you get strong. What's that called? Dunbar's law or it, the more, you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, and that's honestly like, I, I don't know. We, I don't really know what you can take away from this question other than I think it really is just about like your education, like how much time you've put into where, like how much you know about your body and how much you know how to manipulate things to get your body to then get through these plateaus and, and keep progressing. Yeah, I could say this for me, I, I don't think I would have considered myself from what I understand to be advanced. I think it took me a good five, five plus years to really understand my body. I still believed in certain false ideas about resistance training for five, six, seven years after I started working out. Yeah. It took me that long to figure Now, I didn't have a podcast like Mind Pump that I could listen to. A lot of the information I was getting was trying to sell me supplements or whatever. But it took me that long of listening to my body, figuring my body out, and to really get to the point where I could train myself uh, like I can now, right? I, I feel like I can go into a gym, and if I'm being honest with myself, I can really do what I think I need at that moment to feel my best.